the other thing that stood out to me with this is, and we kind of know it, right? I mean, there are only three, uh, you know, depending on how you qualify this as a returning starter, but three quarterbacks coming back in the entire league uh, that were their starters last year. J.J. McCarthy, Gavin Wimsat, uh, he started six games at Rutgers. I was writing that preview this morning for our football preview magazine. Um, and then Talia Tagovailoa over at Maryland. Uh, but Michigan, with J.J. being a third-teamer last year, coming back, now he's the first-team quarterback. Michigan may have the best quarterback in the conference. And I was doing a little bit of research before the show as well. Uh, the last time Michigan had the first-team All-Big Ten quarterback was Denard in 2010, uh, but he didn't even get first-team by both the, the coaches and media. Dan Persa from Northwestern uh, was first-team by the coaches. Before that, Chad Henney in 07, uh, but he also split that honor. And then John Navarre. In 2003, Elvis Gerback, three straight years in the early 90s. And, and I would say probably thanks in part to Doug Skeen as well. We have to give him a shout out those first couple years uh, of Gerback's three-year run there. But your guys' thoughts on that as well, because having the best quarterback is really important in this league. When I look at Ohio State, they've had the last seven uh, first-team quarterbacks in nine of the last ten. They also happen to win the Big Ten almost every season in that stretch and in quite a few in a row there. So the, that could be big. If JJ ends there, I think that is, that bodes really well for you, not only in the big 10, but nationally. Uh, my first thought is don't get hurt young man. You know, I hate to say it, but uh, in writing the football preview, this is the first year in a while, right guys, that they haven't had a quarterback uh, battle or controversy, if you want to call it that. So uh, going back to probably when Shea Patterson left and, uh, and it's really Often it hasn't been the guy that people thought it was going to be. If you if you remember, if you go back to you know we thought that um, uh, well McNamara we thought, and then Joe Milton you know comes out of nowhere or not him, but um, who went to, who am I missing? Uh, Dylan McCaffrey. Yeah, Dylan McCaffrey for crying out loud. He was uh, on the cover of our. I know he was. He was. I mean, Joe Milton, and then the guy quits the team before the season. So. Yeah, and the other guy transfers and couldn't get out of here fast enough. So now he's apparently a Heisman Trophy candidate. I don't know. I guess that remains to be seen. Get a so, good orange ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, but overall, that and number two, uh, that kid is different, man. He's special. I, I, you know what? If if you ask me, uh, who in the conference, uh, if there's anybody else in the conference that's even anywhere near his level at this point, I'd say no. As a leader, as a quarterback, and he's uh, multi-talented. Obviously, can run, can throw, but he's got that leadership ability, guys. That sets kids apart uh, at that position. So to me, it's, uh, it's critical. I'd love to see two more years of him, you know what, but if they win a national championship and he decides that's enough, then, uh, then good for him. But I would not be stunned if he was a four year guy here at Michigan. And, and if he were, uh, what a legacy he would leave. Well, yeah. And you look at this sport in general right now, like you're, you're only going to go for the most part. I mean, the Georgia, Georgia's of the world, the Alabama's of the world have been so talent rich uh, to kind of disprove this, but you're going to go as far as your quarterback takes you. And if you have the best quarterback in the conference in this conference where you have, uh, you know, Ohio state's a pass happy team. I think that Wisconsin's probably going to go to being a pass happy team. I like the, the move they made, um, you know, in the transfer portal to bring in the guy that they did. So I think that could change under Luke fickle, but if you have JJ, a JJ McCarthy, um, who, again, I don't know that he needs to take this. I feel like I feel like a broken record saying this, but you know, I don't know that he needs to take some huge leap to be that guy. You know, he's um, you know he's already proven that he can win a lot of big football games. I think that just improving on the margins. I think his numbers are inherently going to get better. I think that they're going to put a little bit more on his plate in terms of the quarterback run game. So, yeah, I mean. He, it'd be great to see him uh, the next two years, but you already have teams talking about potential first round talent. They're already talking about maybe he declares after this year uh, because he will be draft eligible to get that guy for two more years. would be great, but to have him in the here and now and to have arguably your best player on a loaded team be at the quarterback position. That's not some. that's not a luxury that Michigan has always had. And um, to me, it has them operating out of maybe the biggest position of strength that they ever have in terms of, you know, getting to the college football playoff and winning the college football playoff more often than not means that your quarterback kind of drags you there, not drags you there. We think this team's good enough to get there on its own, but um, you know, how he plays in that big moment and limiting some of those mistakes that he made in the Fiesta bowl and 
just hitting on more of those opportunities and maybe getting a break or two along the way as well, uh, which Michigan did, but it didn't get a few of them that mattered in the TCU game. Uh, it, the sky's the limits for this team and the sky's the limit for JJ McCarthy as well.